and say thank you God isn't it funny that the things they we take for granted others would give anything to get even that which we are throwing away in our complaining moments this moment needs more than what a man can supply and I pray the living God that he would speak to your heart and speak to mine as we go into his word I'd like to talk to you about an issue that challenged my mind some years ago that almost every miracle I looked at in the Bible I said years ago that there are three critical issues present in almost every single miracle as I struggled this morning to find a word from heaven it struck me that I missed one critical issue in your quest for a miracle I've often preached that there are three critical steps but I missed one and early this morning as I was feeding my own soul finding a word for myself something struck me and so I'd like to ask you as you whether you go to the New Testament or the Old Testament could I ask you to pick a story of your own then as we talk about four issues to a miraculous brand new you I've preached a subject entitled three steps to your miracle and I said then that I was tickled by a presentation made by Dr. Gordon O. Martin Borrow. He challenged my mind to search. Advertising agencies appeal to our senses, our desire, our quest at arriving at a brand new you. The pharmaceutical industry, the beauty industry, but multi-billion dollar industries all because there is this innate desire for a brand new person we don't like growing older and so we look for pills to keep us younger we can't deal with the issues of aging and so we fill prescriptions and sometimes they have no use but we trust them anyhow all because of the issues the quest the desire for a brand new you I heard one of my favorite old-time gospel groups with a song that tickled me the two senior singers in the group Glenn Payne and George Younce in the group called the Cathedral Singers well George did a solo with a song that every time I hear it I had to chuckle it's a story of a man who met a girl on Saturday night and got married on Sunday and so they got to the honeymoon place he he was attracted to her singing they got to the honeymoon place and of course every newly married couple looking forward to that honeymoon encounter but as he waited she took out her false teeth put it in a glass on a chair beside the bed then she took off her false eyelashes put it on a napkin on a chair beside the bed then she took off her false hand put it on the chair beside the bed and as she continued taking off he said he slept on the chair because there was more of her there the story tickles my mind because of the stuff we do to find a brand new you 
we stand in need of a miracle in our quest for getting away from getting out of dealing with the stuff that limits the stuff that imprisons the stuff that barricades the stuff that dehumanizes even if it is with our own complicity stay with me i'm going somewhere i say the beauty industry is a multi-billion dollar industry the pharmaceutical industry is a multi-billion dollar industry because of the quest that we have for a brand new you we sometimes cry ourselves to sleep because that which we are seeking after eludes us the advertising agency appeal to our sense of sight smell taste feel we want to look better we want to feel better we are appealed to and so the young boy with a passion for his father wanted to see his father go back to his earlier years when he had more hair on his head he thought his daddy looked more handsome and so he heard this man selling marvelous hair grower and he saved his lunch money and he went down to the place and the crowd was there and he listened as to how much the cost would be but they, he had a question in his mind uh, he was bothered by the fact that the man who was selling marvelous hair grower had a tam had a hat on his head that covered not only the top but almost all of his head the little boy said well I, I i just need to see some evidence and whilst the man was busy selling marvelous hair grower to other customers little boy went behind him to pitch the hat off his head it was a bald-headed man selling marvelous hair grower what are these four issues in a brand new you i'd like to tell you that i'm going to take you to second kings chapter five as a matter of fact we could pick any story of miracles i thought about blind bartimius but 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 my mind rested on on the story in second kings chapter five and so as you follow me i'd like you to know that long before the quest arose in your mind long before you became harassed and driven by this desire to be a brand new you long before you were harassed by your own sins and your own challenges long before the devil captured your mind god made provision hear the preacher before sin entered he provided a plan of redemption long before you have a question he provided an answer long before sin would drive you to contemplate suicide god made a plan for your divine restoration long before the devil walked down your street god opened up a way for you to find an answer to this haunting quest for a brand new you we are haunted by our failures we are haunted by what others have done to us. We are haunted by what others have said about us. We are haunted by our own sinfulness. We are haunted by this and haunted by that and haunted by the devil, perplexed by our own innate desire for the brand new you. One of the things that fascinates me about the story of Naaman is a statement from Jesus. Jesus said that there were many lepers in the time of the prophet that was used in the healing of this Syrian captain. And Jesus said, in the book of luke that none of them was cleansed save naaman the leper now 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 the language of specificity in the text challenges my mind you find the text in luke 4 27. so let me read the text for you before i take you to second kings 5. in luke 
chapter 4 it is verse 27 and the text reads thus Luke 4 27 and many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elijah the prophet many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet but none of them was cleansed saving Naaman the leper now come with me to 2nd Kings chapter 5 we're gonna read verse 1 verse 2 and I'll pause at verse 3 so let's go now Naaman captain of the host of the king of Assyria was a great man with his master honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance to Syria he was also a mighty man in valor but he was a leper and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captives out of the land of Israel a little maid and she waited on Naaman's wife and she said to her mistress she the slave girl said to her slave mistress she the slave girl said to the one who had exercised uh, this mastery over her the one who was responsible for taking away her freedom she said to her mistress I would to God that my Lord Naaman the word Lord here is a, the, the, the word from which we get boss the, she's saying I wish to God that that my slave master could meet my pastor I wish to God that 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 my Lord would meet the prophet that is in Samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy I missed something I must have missed something Jesus said there were many lepers in Israel but none of them got healing excepting Naaman the leper question where did this little girl get that conviction from she had no point of reference she had never seen anyone cleansed from leprosy because Jesus said it there were many lepers but none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian where did she get that which drove her not just to contemplate that thought but to be convinced enough that she could share that without a shadow of a doubt look what she said i wish my master could meet my pastor there are two things that jumped out at me that whoever the prophet was to her there was one thing that was clear in her mind that even years of slavery could never erase from her mind it is simply this that the man who claimed to be her prophet was a living example of the power of the living God that led her to this conviction that if anybody can do it then this man with such a connection with God he can do it that's why you got to be careful who teaches you you've got to be careful who your priest is got to be careful who your pastor is. are you listening to me I'm gonna be bold today Holy Ghost help the preacher listen to me carefully the world and the church sometimes is in the mess it's in because God is looking long and hard for representative who will do nothing else but abide by the plain thus said the Lord God 
who will take their instructions not from the opinions of men but from the word of the living God the second thing the second thing that that plants itself on my mind is this if we can be convinced about what some folk called generational curses then we must also be prepared to deal with generational blessings because I hear, I hear Paul speaking of Timothy said I know of the faith which was in your grandmother which was also in your mother which I also see in you so let's get back to Naaman now we're talking about four issues to a brand new miraculous you issue number one is the issue of divine provision the issue of divine provision hear the preacher God makes provision for your restoration long before you were ever broken. God made provision for your cleansing long before you were ever messed up. So can I play with this a while? Give me some homiletical license here. So God raised up a great great grandmother who will have no way of knowing a leper named Naaman and God calls her to meet a gentleman and they have a son or a daughter and that that second generation had a son or a daughter I'm just playing on your mind so here now we come we come to the parents of this little girl and the point I want to make right here is this there has got to be something that was instilled in her her parents had got no matter how you look at the story you can't miss this her years in slavery her ill treatment or good treatment could never erase from her mind a faith in almighty God that helped her to believe that God can do even the impossible though she'd never seen it done there is a challenge to every God-fearing parent, to every God-fearing grandparent. If you have only one opportunity, you may not be able to buy your granddaughter a tablet or a computer, but you can take her on her knees and help her understand there is a living God in glory with transforming power, soul-saving power, sin and devil-chasing power. You may not be able to send them to a university, but oh, take them on the chariot of your knees in prayer and help them to, hallelujah discover a life changing relationship with the living God the best building block of a messed up world is a life that is grounded and rooted in the will of the living God we spend our money and we go to great extremes to make sure our children are educated in the world's finest universities but we can't spend a five minutes to pray with them and pray over them we'll sell the land we'll sell the house to buy them car and buy them stuff but we can't buy them a bible we can't take them on their knees we've got to help them build a lasting relationship with the living god no matter the long journey there's something here that baffles me she's in slavery but she was never bitter uprooted from her culture but you've got to understand faith in almighty god have no respect for cultural boundaries nor national barriers She said, I wish to God that my master could meet my pastor. The prophet was her pastor. 
It's her spiritual leader. So she comes to a strange place. You see, God is so amazing that he'll step over nations and pick out one man. Jesus said there were many lepers in Israel. Naaman wasn't an Israelite. He's a Syrian. God is no respecter of persons. His salvation is for all sinners. Regardless of which continent you're watching me from. Regardless of which island you're watching me from. Regardless of your age or your stage. Regardless of your position or your station in life. Regardless of the color of your skin and the texture of your hair and the content of your head. Regardless of who you are. I bring you salvation from a God who made all men to be conformed to the image of Jesus and he'll step over some to bring salvation to somebody else I said he'll step over some so long before Naaman became a leper God raised up a grandmother and a grandfather who gave birth to a son or a daughter who gave birth to another son or a daughter who gave birth to this little girl I said God made provision for the problem long before the problem encountered I don't care what your problem is I don't care what your mountain is I don't care what your issue is if you want to be a brand new you the answer is not in the beauty industry the answer is not in changing your hair uh -uh. you may have extenders and expanders back and front and sides or everywhere else the answer is not in the pharmaceutical industry the answer is not in the business industry you've got to understand that we have come now to a point in the 20th first century where circumstances have forced us to understand there are some problems in this life that our intellect can't handle our science can't handle our money can't handle we've got some issues that only God can handle and so the the first point the first issue towards a brand new miraculous you is the recognition of divine provision for whatever your circumstances are you cannot become a brand new you without divine provision I said you cannot become a brand new you you may go to church from January to December from 1901 to 0000000 there is no salvation in church membership there's no transformation in mere church membership there is no conversion in mere church membership conversion and transformation and restoration is a divine provision he makes provision for your restoration listen to me young man broken up and messed up Drugs can fix it, friends can fix it, new cars can fix it, penthouse can fix it. He makes provision for our restoration. I'm hurrying. So the little girl said, with conviction, I wish to God. Now I have to keep on reminding you that Jesus said, she has no point of reference of any leper being cleansed. But her conviction of God 
is that God can do anything, including the impossible. And so she went to her mistress and she said to her, you know, there's a prophet where I come from. He ain't like the prophet where you come from. I, 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 I feel a mischievous spirit coming on me. There's a pastor where I come from. There's a Bible-believing preacher where I come from. There's a law-abiding prophet where I come from. There's a commandment-keeping prophet where I come from. There's a sin-hating, devil-chasing prophet where I come from. There's a God-connected prophet where I come from. And if only my master could meet my pastor. I have no doubt in my mind that his days of leprosy would be over. Now she must have said it with some conviction because evidently Mrs. Naaman believed it. I know that you wives know that, that sometimes you can take any old foolishness to your husband and depending on the mood you catch him in. But she must have said it with such conviction because Naaman himself was convinced. Now, 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 now go back to the beginning of the text. Now Naaman, captain of the Lord's house, captain of the host of the Syrians, was a great man. Now, I, I have to pause here. Greatness in our postmodern culture is sometimes measured by the size of your assets, your connections, the wealth you have amassed, the intellectual acumen that you've grasped, the power of your influence. But, but the text is saying to us that there are some issues that our greatness can't handle. Are you listening to me? The, the text says that, 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 that he was a great man and, and that he had gotten great victories for his country, but he had a problem that military might and prowess couldn't prevail over. He had a problem that his persistence as a war hero couldn't deal with. There are some issues in your life that can only be handled by Almighty God. Great man, great wealth, great accomplishment, great intellect, great conflict but listen no matter the greatness you have you could be president queen king or prime minister there are some problems that your greatness can't handle you may walk around parading like a self accomplished peacock with all your feathers glittering in the constellation of those who work with you, work for you, work around you. But there are some problems that your greatness can't handle. So the text says, The Syrians had gone out by companies, brought away captives out of the land of Israel, little maid. The text says, now there's something here that, that the Lord would give deliverance to a Syrian. We talk about the visible and the invisible church. And there's one thing you have to understand. Whether you can see the ones who you think going to heaven, or you can't see the ones who God knows are going to heaven, the truth is, there's a single thread that wires all of God's children together, and that is a non-negotiable surrender to the will of God. So the first issue in a brand new miraculous you, issue number one, recognize that divine provision has been made for your restoration, for your healing, for your cleansing, for your wholeness. 
there's an answer in heaven for the prayer that you have not yet prayed i'm gonna say it again there is an answer in heaven i don't care how long you've prayed maybe you said preacher i've been praying about this thing and it ain't happening i've been praying about this thing and there's no answer can i tell you there's an answer in heaven for a prayer that you have not yet prayed i don't know what that prayer is but i've got to tell you pray without ceasing and when the right prayer meets the right attitude with the right surrender and god's timing the answer will come he may not come when you want him but he's an on-time god the second issue the second issue the second issue in in this matter of a brand new miraculous you have you ever have you ever wondered why sometimes you, you get in trouble because you have this expectation you set your mind to think a certain way you set your mind to say it has got to happen this way and sometimes our expectation become a fundamental problem in preventing our own restoration sometimes not only is it that we have misplaced expectation wrong expectation sometimes we have no expectation at all you've been down so long that getting up is not on your mind you've been hurt so badly that you won't trust again you've been broken so often that you feel that wholeness is gone from you never to return you've been bombarded by darkness that you feel that the sun will never shine again you have no expectation for yourself no expectation from god no expectation for a better life if ever you're going to discover and experience a brand new you there are four issues towards a brand new miraculous you issue number one recognize that divine provision has already been made for your restoration issue number two you've got to have some expectation can i take you to some miracles in the bible and show you that the ten lepers had expectations they said lord if you will you can make us clean blind bartimius cried out lord i want my sight the woman with the issue of blood had some expectation she said if i could just touch the hem of his garment i know hear me carefully when you look at 99 percent of all the miracles in your bible you're going to discover human expectation what do you expect from god you've been broken messed up or maybe you are wealthy and accomplished financially and intellectually but all that knowledge and all that wealth hasn't given you the peace you're seeking the wholeness you're seeking what's your expectation now, now let's look at our text let's let's look at we're talking about the four issues to a brand new miraculous you issue number one is the issue of divine provision number two the issue of your expectation and so the text says the text says that the young girl said to to her her mistress i, I wish to god that my my master could 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 meet the prophet in samaria and so he went to the king and the king gave him letters now watch this the king gave naaman letters to take to the king of israel because in his mind the king's expectation is that this matter has got to be handled on the level of royal connection can i talk with you can i talk with you can i talk with you it ain't your connection that will fix it it's god's connection it's not your connection with who you think or who you expect and sometimes we get in more trouble because we place wrong mm, misplaced expectation so, so I, I'm running fast, so listen fast. The, 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 the letter came to the king, and the king said, 
see how this man want to pick a fight with me does he think i am god he's sending me letters to cure leprosy he wants to pick a war with me i don't know how word got to the pastor i don't know how word got to the prophet but but i love the word of god are you listening to me so let me jump fast let me jump fast now and it was so when elisha the man of god you know who elisha is elisha was the one who was anointed by a depressed prophet i said elisha was successor to elijah elisha wanted so much of god that he said to elijah i want a double portion of what you have it's not that he was proud but he knew himself he acknowledged he was less than a half of what elijah was so he said if i'm going to be half as good i must be twice as empowered do you know yourself what expectation do you have for your own spiritual resurgence what expectation do you have for your own spiritual restoration so so elijah anointed elisha as a prophet and elisha said to elijah can you give me a double portion of the power that's over your life can you give me a double portion of the connection you have with God can you give me he, he, he must have been saying you know how difficult it is to live for God in these circumstances in these times and you're going uh, Elisha said I have something down inside of me that tells me you're going to leave yeah, you anoint me to be in your place but I'm less than half of who you are i can't fulfill the assignment you place on my shoulder elijah said to elisha if you see me when i'm going up then you'll get what you ask for and when the chariots of fire descended elisha screamed out the chariot of israel in other words, I see you. You made a deal with me. God made me see you. And the mantle fell. And he picked it up. His first challenge was to go over. You see, you can go someplace with some folk who've got right connection. But baby, when you're left on your own, got to have your own connection. Now he was left on his own. He's got to cross Jordan to get back home I don't care what Jordan you have to cross over but if you've got the right connection with the right living God if you've got the right connection so he picked up the mantle yes I know it was Elijah's mantle but now he made it his own he reached out to God and when he struck the water the sons of the prophet said yes he's got it he's got it now this Elisha heard that the king rent his clothes. I haven't forgotten my subject. It may take me a long time to get there, but in the multitudes of my scattered thoughts, I ask the Holy Ghost to take the right thought to your mind today. Hear the preacher, hear the preacher. Eight days from today is your baptism. I don't care how broken, how distant, how messed up you are, God is moving you towards restoration. Eight days from the day, you may have wandered from the church in the Lehigh area. You may have drifted from God. Or maybe you've been going to church, but you're not yet baptized. Or maybe you've been baptized, but deep down inside of you, you're yearning for a brand new you. You're yearning for something you do not have. You're yearning for something that pharmacy can't give you and beauty oil can't and give you are you listening to me and so elisha heard that the king rent his clothing and elisha said 
Why are you wearing your clothes? If you knew God, you would know that God don't intend for you to cure him. Send him to me. And you will know. And he shall know that there is a God in Israel. Send him to me. I don't have any power of my own, but as sure as God lives, the same God who took up Elijah in a chariot of fire, the same God who parted the water when I called at him, send that leprous problem, because there's no problem too big for God to handle. Send him to me, and you will know, and he shall know that there is a God. No, that's not what he said. He said, send him to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. What confidence? It was not a, an overinflated sense of his own importance. It was not some haughty spirit. He was sure of his relationship with God. He was sure that he was a servant of God. Send him to me and he'll know that there's a prophet. So he comes to Elisha. I haven't forgotten my subject. I'm talking about the four issues to a brand new miraculous you. I haven't forgotten what I told you. I told you that issue number one is the issue of divine provision for whatever problems you face. Issue number two is your issue of expectation. You see, if you don't expect God to do it, you're going to go to him with a double-minded, wavering heart. When you go to God in prayer, you've got to go with the confidence that he is whom he says he is. You have to go with the quality of resolute faith that he will do what he says he will do. Naaman comes with an expectation that needed some alteration. So he comes and, and he formed in his mind, driven by a sense of his own importance. Don't, don't rush past this. I said he was driven by a sense of his own importance. He had this self-inflated estimation of his statue and his value well hear me i don't care how much money you have i don't care how much knowledge you have i don't care how many earned degrees you have i don't care the size of your assets there are some things in your life that only god can handle and for god to handle it gotta humble yourself get down off your high horse adjust your attitude are you listening to me so the prophet said to him go down to jordan and dip yourself seven times now, 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 now let, let me let me share with you naaman's attitude that needed some rearrangement the bible said elisha sent a messenger he didn't even come out to touch you elisha sent a messenger listen to me some folks said, well, I hear God's word. I, I hear what the commandment says. But if I'm going to do it, God going to have to come to me himself. Tande, I, I mean, I'm sorry I'm speaking to Lehi. You could stay there. When the word of God comes to you, got to humble your heart. Get out of your high horse. The Bible said that Go wash in Jordan seven times and your flesh will come. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought. Now this is his problem. I thought. Do you know what the Bible said? The ancient prophet Isaiah said, 
in Isaiah 55, 7 through 9, he said, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my thoughts and my ways higher than yours. The problem why many people fail to come to Christ is that they have their own thoughts as to how God should function and what God should do. The problem why many pastors and priests and bishops remain as they are in a place of disobedience is because they tell themselves that this is what God means by what God says. This, this, this is what God intended to have said. Th this is what the commandment was supposed to mean. So he said, I thought, I haven't forgotten my subject. I'm talking about the four, you know them. And he starts comparing the rivers in Damascus and the rivers in Syria. He thought to himself as to how he would be cured that the man, the prophet, would come and touch smooth over the leprosy. And he left in a rage. He left angry, but he was still an angry leper. He left in a rage. He was still a leper filled with rage. He left with his pride but he was still a leper with his pride. He left with his thoughts, but he was still a leper in spite of his own thoughts. If you could have fixed that problem, you would never still be in it. Don't you think it's time to humble your heart before God? Don't you think it's time to rearrange your expectations? And your attitude. I'm almost done. Hang with the preacher. I'm talking about the four issues to a brand new and what would I said miraculous you. Because sometimes what we need is a miracle. Our intellect can't fix it. I'm going to ask him to begin playing for me softly. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Listen to me carefully. I'm going to ask him just to play for me softly. Hear me carefully. As he plays softly, listen to the preacher. If you could have fixed it, watch my words and watch my cue. If you could have fixed it, as he plays softly, if you could have fixed it, you would still not be in it. If you could have fixed it, you would still not be in it. If you could have fixed it, if you could have fixed it, you would still not be in it. A brand new you requires a recognition of a divine provision that you don't have a problem that God can't handle you don't have a challenge that God can't fix you don't have a mess in your life that God can't clean up maybe it's your attitude of untamed rage of unrestrained pride Maybe the only reason you're still away from God, disconnected from your own self, is a failure to recognize divine provision for your restoration. To recognize the place of human expectation. I rush to the third piece. Not only is there divine provision, long before you have a question, God reserve an answer. Long before you had a problem, the Bible said before he laid the foundation of the earth, 
he ordained that we should be conformed to the image of his son according to his marvelous grace the third piece that you can't miss I won't go into the details of the story but the third piece you can't miss yes there's divine provision yes there is human expectation but you cannot miss the place of relevant human action your actions must be in harmony with God's will if you're going to experience a miracle if you're going to experience your cleansing if you're going to have your victory your actions must be in line with God's divine instruction so the prophet said to Naaman go dip in Jordan he wanted Arvana he wanted Parfa you cannot fix yourself you can't fix it all by yourself if you could have you would have a long time ago so he's leaving in a rage do you know why we we have some folk called bible counselors do you know why we have some folks called friendship teams do you know why we have some folk to call you up after you've driven from church because God knows you need somebody to help you reason the right when your pride gets in the way when your rage gets in the way when your thoughts aren't aligned with God's thoughts he sends a messenger with a message to say stop and pay some attention here so he's going home but he can't go home a leper his rage can't fix him had he gone home he would have died a leper listen to me i don't know how many sermons you've heard but i bring you one more this morning you can't go home the same way you're living right now So they said, Master, if the prophet had asked you to do some great things, wouldn't you do it? If he had asked you to go on some military conquest, wouldn't you do it? But look at this simple thing. Go dip in Jordan. Preachers have always played on this. It's the call seven. And while I don't intend to go there, I can't rush past it. There's something significant with God and seven. Seven is the number of completion. You have in the Bible references about the seven spirits of God, the seven trumpets, the seven vials of the Van Rath, the seven letters, the seven uh, fold feasts. You have in the Bible the series of seven, the seven last plagues. You have in the Bible this unmistakable non-negotiable issue that regardless of your color regardless of your country there are only seven days to your week i don't care which country you're gonna go to there are still 24 hours in your day seven days to your week because god almighty set the boundary of time and when he was finished in six days creating the sun the moon the stars the plants the everything he settled down and at the close of the sixth day he formed man from the dust of the ground breathed into man's nostrils the breath of life and he made him a living being and the next thing that adam knew was that god blessed the seventh day and god God Almighty would come down every Sabbath day for fellowship and communion with his first creation his first handmaid oh I thank God I was never blessed to be in Eden I was never blessed to be able to have face-to-face -face fellowship with the Lord God but this one thing I'm sure of as sure as I know I'm breathing right now I'm sure of the fact that someday in the earth made new from one Sabbath to another on the seventh day God and his children will have on 
soul fellowship together so God said when God said seven six can't do one five can't do one four can't do one three can't do one two can't do one, and one can't do when God says seven it has got to be seven So he dipped seven times in obedience to God's instruction. The first issue is that divine provision was already made even before he was a leper. Before he recognized his problem, God allowed grandparents and parents of a child the child was born long before Naaman knew that this was going to be the source or the vehicle of his healing the child was nurtured to have faith in Almighty God and God would allow the child to be taken from Jerusalem all the way to Syria so that a Syrian leper could experience a kind of miraculous healing that no other leper in the time of Elisha experienced. I don't know who you are, but God has climbed over loops and mountains. He's already handpicked you if you have if you have sense enough to understand divine provision is made if you have an appropriate expectation if your actions are lined up with God's instruction the last and final piece is divine intervention I said the last and final piece is divine intervention that when 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 folk gave you up and when the doctors give you up and when you give up on yourself if you can still believe God will intervene I don't know who's listening to me right now all churched out but if you can say take me to the king I don't have much to bring take me to the king because all I want is to be in the hands of the king of kings he is still a miracle worker when I'm messed up and broken and need restoration when I can't help myself take me take me to the king divine provision human expectation human action in line with God's instruction will be met by divine intervention and so the ten lepers were told go show yourself to the priest because divine provision was already made and they had an expectation of healing sometimes God's instruction may not be according to your own direction but if you're going to get a miracle your actions have to be lined up with God's instruction and the text says as they went they were healed obedience to God even when he does not make sense to you is still fundamental to the miracle that you're seeking the beauty industry can't make you over the pharmaceutical industry can't make you a brand new you your earthly connections can make you a brand new you recognize number one divine provision was made long before you had a problem and God will wait until your problems come up he'll sometimes bring one person from way over here to way over here just to fix you he'll step over mountains over nations 
he'll step across continent just to pick you out and place a blessing on your shoulder but you've got to recognize divine provision is enough for any challenge you have and there is an answer in heaven for a prayer that you have not yet prayed can you pray that prayer today how badly do you want to be healed I'm done when he dipped seven times in complete obedience to God's instructions notice his rage was gone his attitude was readjusted he recognized divine provision his expectation was reordered he stepped down in the Jordan he dipped seven times his action was demonstrating surrender and obedience to divine instruction and the Bible said when he came up the seventh time his flesh looked like the flesh of a little child I'm done they're playing a song the singer song pass me not O gentle Savior I told you earlier Jesus said in Luke 4 27 there were many lepers but they were passed over and he picked out Naaman maybe your attitude has been getting in God's way so he's passed over you giving you time to change your attitude giving you time to adjust your expectations giving you time to bring your actions in harmony with divine instructions do you want a brand new you are you looking for a miracle are you tired of your brokenness are you tired of crying yourself to sleep are you tired of trying drugs and trying friends and trying this and trying that? Are you tired of, of going from one degree of sin to another? Are you tired of trying one pleasure, madness after another? And you're still broken. You're still messed up. You're still haunted. You're still hunted. You're still wetting your pillow with liquid frustration. You're still broken. There's a miracle waiting on you. There's a miracle with your name stamped on it. There's a miracle with your name written on it. Will you recognize God's provision and your need of him? Will you adjust your attitude and your expectations? Will you bring your actions in harmony with God's divine instruction? Because if you can do that, your miracle is only a prayer away. Divine intervention is coming down your street. I don't know how long you've drifted from the church, but eight days from today is your baptism in the Lehi church or the church nearest to you. Eight days from today is your baptism. I came to this pulpit this morning as the devil tried to mess with me but I came here asking God just direct my mind according to your divine will Gen Z's young professionals accomplished intellectual go back and read Steve Jobs closing words before he closed his eyes in death visit if you will the bedside of Whitney Houston before she closed her eyes in death go back if you will and traverse the steps and days of the final moments of Michael Jackson go back if you will to any of those multi billionaires and you will know that when you come down to kiss a dying pillar your multi billions cannot buy you one more day on the topsoil of earth 
because there are some problems in your life that money can fix and beauty can fix and pharmacy can fix only God can fix it will you bring your actions in line with divine instruction I'm going to be praying for you whether you are in Africa North, South or Central America Asia or the European continent or the islands of the sea the amazing thing about the living God whom I worship is that he's here, he's there, he's everywhere and his love embraces all. Whosoever will, will you come to him today right where you are? I'm done. Let us pray. Almighty God, we need fixing. We need fixing of the world because we've used our intellect to banish you from the center of our lives. But here we are, a world where COVID-19 shut down our planes and shut down our businesses. And when we thought we found an answer, a second wave comes, and a third wave comes. And with each new wave, it becomes deadlier and even more deadlier. We're piling up dead bodies because our moths can't hold them. Because we flexed our fist in your face. We need fixing. We need fixing, not only as a world. We need fixing, not only as countries. Because God, the same story is in the rich country and the poor. Because we are only one virus away from being paupers. We are only one virus away from a hand-to-mouth experience we're only one disease away from paralysis we're only one disease away from being totally helpless we need fixing God we need fixing as individuals because you come to us in each of our varied circumstances you come to us with a solution that is, that is made for our problems. You come to us with hope for our hopelessness, healing for our brokenness. Restore us, we pray. Heal our wounded, broken spirit. Restore us to yourself. For those who have wandered from the fold, God, this coming weekend, you will once again open the fountain of baptism. For those who have never surrendered their lives to you, this coming weekend, you're opening up one more opportunity. Pass us not, O oh gentle Savior. And when the last prayer will have been prayed, when the last invitation would have been given, when the last benediction would have been uttered, when time like a weary traveler will rest its head on the bosom of eternity, when our fondest hope of Christian faith will clasp hands in the unshakable reality, the indestructible reality of your second coming. Receive us, we ask, in Jesus' name.